Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's uh, Star Trek Guilty Pleasure episode. So, in this video I will line out the episodes from all uh, of the Star Trek series, uh, which episodes I consider guilty pleasures. So this was a Patreon suggested video, uh, suggested by uh, Patreon Cardinal Doomsday. And uh, when he requested this video, I was really... <sighs> It was hard for me at first because I never really thought of episodes of Star Trek in terms of guilty pleasures. Like, for me, there's a lot of episodes that um, I really like that a lot of other people hate. But that doesn't necessarily make it a guilty pleasure because in a lot of cases I don't feel guilty about liking that episode. I just think that everyone else is wrong. <laughs> and I've already did a series about that. Um where episodes I like that everyone else seems to hate. Uh, and I will admit there is some crossover episodes that are both in that list and in this one. But I realized that it's definitely a different list. Like, I'm not just... Because, as I said, like some episodes, I, actually, I don't feel guilty about liking them because I just think they're good. But so I had to try to define what a guilty pleasure meant for me. And I suppose that meant that I could see that is not really a good episode but I like it anyway so so that's how I'm defining guilty pleasure and I think I do take popular opinion into account uh, somewhat as well because there's a couple episodes I was considering putting on the list but then I was like well people would be confused by that because it's not that it's a guilty pleasure because they think of course you like it it's a good episode so episodes that are that are popular so i kind of discounted them uh, as well now i narrowed it down to 10 episodes i looked at all six of the star trek series although i didn't choose any for discovery because that only has one season and there wasn't any episode i really considered a guilty pleasure might even just consider discovery as a whole a guilty pleasure at this stage uh, but we'll see where that goes um so basically i just have episodes from the five star trek series uh, the original series next generation deep space nine voyager and enterprise and i'm not gonna form this i decided not to form this in a the form of a top 10 where I list it from like the most guilty to the least guilty or whatever uh, I'll just do it in order of um, of the release date so I'll go series by series and do it in that order rather than saying oh I feel more guilty about this one or I like this one better because I don't know <laughs> that was just a bit confusing uh, so yeah I had quite a few actually episodes and I had to narrow it down to 10 because I had to try to think the ones that I I don't necessarily think they're bad necessarily but to some degree or another I can see why it's kind of bad, <laughs> and, and so and so I like it despite the fact that it has some obvious flaws, and a lot of other people may hate it. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let me get into my list of guilty pleasure Star Trek episodes, and I'll start with the original series, uh, and we'll start <laughs> with uh, an obvious one: Spock's brain. Now, another thing I was going to say is that when I was looking at Guilty Pleasures, I tried to rule out episodes that are so bad they're good because there's a difference. Like, I didn't put the fight from Voyager in this list because that was more of a, a so bad is good, which isn't necessarily the same as a Guilty Pleasure. But with Spock's brain, I, to me that actually crosses over because it, it, it definitely the so bad it's good is definitely a strong element in why I like this episode, but it's not just that. Like, because, like, with the fight, I even though I think it's so bad it's good, I still put it in my worst list. I still put it as my number two worst Voyager episodes. But with Spock's Brain, I don't put it in the worst list. In fact, I just got a comment the other day on my original series, uh, Top Ten, where I also has the worst five, and someone was like, how could you not put Spock's Brain in the worst list? And I think... Honestly, I don't consider this one of the worst episodes. I mean, not only do I get enjoyment. Like, he quoted something about her saying, uh, Brain in brain. What is brain? And I'm like, 
how can you say that the silly episode's bad? That line's brilliant. It's hilarious. And like they have Kirk like going to his knees, going, "Great leader, great." I mean, that's sure. I get so much enjoyment out of watching that episode. I can't put it on the worst list. And actually. I saw it. I saw it for the first time uh, when I was like twelve or eleven or something, and I actually really liked it. And that actually, and I talked about. I did a full length review of this episode, and I talked about it then. Is that I actually think it works if you view it as an episode of a kids show, an episode as like a cartoon, or uh, you know something geared towards children, because children, kids shows don't really follow the same rules of reality. They can just do whatever, and you just suspend disbelief to an extreme degree and just go with it uh something like star trek even the original series you you expect some level of reality of, of uh <laughs> some level of like facts and <laughs> some level of science uh that actually exists and which this this episode just goes fucking bonkers and i think the contrast to this episode to the rest of the series is probably why a lot of people latch on to it but i think if you actually look at it as like an episode of a, a show gears towards children it actually really works in that way now i still consider it a guilty pleasure because it is obviously off the walls crap bad shit insane i will not deny that this is a bad episode but i still enjoy watching it anyway uh, sticking with the original series, we'll get to my next uh, guilty pleasure, which is that which survives. Now, I'm, I don't think people hate on this episode as much, but I think generally speaking, it's not considered that good of an episode. But I always liked it, and when I went back and watched it again, I could see, yeah, this episode actually isn't very good. So, <laughs> so this is the episode where you know Kirk. Uh, Sulu and I think McCoy are trapped on the planet and and there's some red shirt who's actually a blue shirt but he's basically a red shirt who just dies uh, <laughs> who's being hunted by this like woman who they find out is just like a projection of a computer that as soon as she touches somebody uh, they die uh, and so I always that I would kind of like this episode because I had that creepy sort of feel of these people being trapped and being hunted. But watching it again, I can see how they were trying to mix in like sex appeal from the having the sexy lady. And I think there's good ideas that they didn't quite develop. So I do think it's it's not a very good episode, but I still like it. I still enjoy watching. It. I still get that creeped out feeling. So. Yeah, it's another guilty pleasure for me. Anyway, let's move on to the next generation. Uh, <laughs> so the next generation actually had the most episodes uh, when I was putting out my options. Like, I came up with the most next generation episodes, so I had to narrow this one down the most. Um, so let's start with The Royale. Um, yeah, my brother hates this episode, and I think a lot of people hate this episode i never hated this episode that much and listening to like certain reviews on it and, and analysis of it, it is very flawed it has a lot of plot holes there's a lot of uh, ways that they could have gotten out of its situation oh and again this is the episode where Riker and his away team are, are trapped in this cheesy like recreation of like um i think a 50s or 60s uh crappy um, crime novel taking place in the casino. Uh, and again, this episode has that element of eeriness, even though there's tons of plot holes in it. It still has that ele element of eeriness of people being trapped uh, and trying to get out. And it, I actually find the resolution to this episode of Data like uh, winning the craps and everyone <laughs> having fun I find that fun. I, I, so I get enjoyment out of watching this episode, even though I will fully acknowledge it is not a good episode. Anyway, <laughs> I just I just like watching it. Anyway, uh, so sticking with Next Generation, let's get into the cost of living. Now, this is and Troy, and uh, Alexander. So Worf's son, Alexander, is when she comes aboard and they have formed a relationship. Now, it's funny because I recently did a video a live discussion with Wes from uh, Penske File, and I was listing the episodes I hated most from Deep Space Nine from the first three seasons of Deep Space Nine, 
and every single Roxanne and Troy episode of Deep Space Nine <laughs> uh, was something I named. And there's one in the fourth season as well, News, which I would also name as one of the worst. That's one of the worst of the entire show of Deep Space Nine. So I realized, like, I really don't like Roxanne and Troy. But that might be more on Deep Space Nine. Although I don't really like her next generation either. Like the episode Manhunt her season two episode, I, I think it is an absolute garbage episode. And in many ways... This episode's kind of just rehashing that because it's about her, you know, being lonely and marrying this man because every episode she's in is about her marrying a man and this man's like a dick, like he sends, he's like all conservative and dressed up and totally, you can tell that like she's completely the wrong uh, match for Loxana. She's just so desperate to settle down. She'll just, she'll take anyone. <laughs> and, and so that's, that plot's been done. Like, not exactly, but this, in some form. So they're not, they're treading the same ground. And Alexander in the fifth season Next Generation, I gotta be frank, was boring. Most episodes that focused on him was boring. Whenever I see him, I'm like, oh, this is boring. And to be fair, when this episode first came out, I didn't like it. And, but it slowly grew on me because it had some iconic lines and iconic moments that just that just stuck with me, such as and I even put this in my top ten funniest episodes of Star Trek, which I got a lot of pushback on. Uh, but a lot of lines stuck with me, uh, such as Worf, you know, when Alexander was in a uh, counseling meeting with Alexander and Troy, and uh, Alexander's complaining that Worf yells at him all the time. He's like, I do not! I do not yell. <laughs> like, that's classic. And the whole, the higher the fewer. I mean, that line is just so weird. Like, I didn't find it funny at all, but it's just something that sort of just stuck with me and, like, weaseled his way into the back of my mind and sort of now I find it hilarious so I don't know so on some level this I do enjoy watching this episode a lot and think it's funny even though it's and it has a throwaway BS techno babble side plot like a lot of these crappy episodes do but I still like it anyway Sticking with Next Generation, uh, let's move on to Genesis. Uh, season, so this is Season 7 episode where the entire crew <laughs> de-evolve into animal creatures. <laughs> now, i am got to be honest. I'll be completely honest with you. When this episode first came out, I didn't consider this a guilty pleasure. I just, just considered it a good episode. Uh, when time gone by, and I've heard a lot of people trash this episode... I think they make a lot of good points. <laughs> I think there's a lot wrong with this episode. It is silly. It's over the top. It's completely scientifically inaccurate. But I still like it. I still think it's a fun episode. It's a scary episode. This, I think, is one of the best sort of horror like hollow, I almost call it like a Halloween type episode. I think when I first saw this, it was around Halloween. Uh, and it was like dark and stormy and the whole atmosphere worked <laughs> and yeah, I was actually creeped out by this episode because you know you have Picard and Data come returning to the Enterprise to find it like it's turned into a, like a, a freak show <laughs> it's like creatures running around killing each other now uh, there are obvious flaws with this episode, such as like uh, it's it's uh, it's you know a given that some crew members has eaten other crew members during this time, uh, and yet like everything goes back to normal. Like that reset button is smashed so hard at the end of this episode, you wouldn't even believe where they actually should be very long-lasting consequences from what happened, but there isn't. Um. But I still find it effectively scary, particularly when Picard, like the wharf turns into this weird Klingon creature is chasing Picard around the ship. That was a good, scary scene. So, even though I, <laughs> I think this episode is obviously flawed, still like it, still enjoy watching it. Anyway, <clears throat> let me now move over to Deep Space Nine. And, um, yeah, I'm going to have to say move along home. Uh, and this, to be honest, like, the reason why, I never considered this a guilty pleasure before. The reason why I consider it a guilty pleasure now is because of all the hate 
that is constantly thrown at this. Before I heard this hate, I just said, oh, this is a decent episode. But uh, I've watched so many videos and read so many reviews and, so, and people who just trashed the fuck out of this episode. And to be fair, they point out a lot of valid points, a lot of flaws in the episode. I've noticed some flaws myself. There's a lot of things wrong. Uh, Avery Brooks himself bashed this episode. But I still like it. And to be honest, like this this hate to this episode is something new. Like I just heard about it in like in the past three or four years. Like before that I had no I just considered it as a decent episode. I had no idea there was so much hatred uh for this episode out there. Uh but now that I, I you know, hear the complaints, I do think that they make a lot of good points and why it is a bad episode, but I still like it i'm sorry i still get a lot of enjoyment particularly and i quote this all the time it's one of my favorite odor lines when uh prenum as the odor wants to beam aboard the wadi ship and prenum's like oh odor you can't do just do that you can't just beam over to someone's ship without their permission and odor's like oh 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 is that a Starfleet rule? And Prenna was like, yeah. He's like, but I'm not in Starfleet! <laughs> That's awesome! I love it! And also when when Quark is like uh, on the ground going, please! That is hilarious. Uh, and I kind of just like the whole thing with the Wadi. Now, the whole, like, yeah, a lot of the story, a lot of the plot is, like, plot holes galore. So, <laughs> I do have to admit, liking this episode is a guilty pleasure. Anyway, let me move on to uh, Keeping in Deep Space Nine. Let me move on to Who Mourns for Mourn. Um, now, I don't think, I haven't necessarily per se heard a lot of other people hating this episode. This is more my internal thinking, because I still like this episode, but I don't think it's good, if that makes any sense. Like, I just, because the episode itself isn't that great, but I just love Morn so much. Uh, I just love the concept. I love the whole execution of Morn throughout Deep Space Nine. The fact that he's never focused on until this episode. He's always just like a running gag. And the fact that the writers were like had the balls to do an entire episode of like a an extra. He's basically an extra. Like, the gag is that Moore never talks, and everyone always says that he talks all the time. And the real reason, like, the out-of-story, the studio reason of why he never talks is because he's an extra and they don't want to pay him more. <laughs> if, they, if, he, if he speaks and he's no longer an extra, he's an actor and they have to up his salary quite a bit. And they don't want to do that. <laughs> so they make it so he doesn't talk. Uh, and I still love... I wonder if they paid him more for this episode. They probably didn't. Although, he, to be fair, again, he doesn't actually appear in this episode that much. He only appears at the very end when he has like a one-sided conversation with Quark. When Quark is saying everything of course because he still doesn't speak i don't know i think at this point it has less to do with the money and more to do with they wanting to keep the running gag because this is an established running gag but of course the fact that we'll save them some money as well works um yeah, but the episode itself is just basically about, like, bang of thieves, a gang of things, thieves that Quark was friends with running around trying to manipulate Quark. And it was a somewhat interesting plot, uh, but I gotta be honest, I would not like this episode nearly as much if it wasn't about Morn. Uh, so I consider this a guilty pleasure. Anyway, uh, let's move on, move on, move along <laughs> over to Voyager. Uh, and so Voyager... First guilty pleasure, and again, this is very similar to uh, Genesis. I talked about in Next Generation. Uh, this episode is called um, Macrocosm, I think, is how you pronounce it. Macro Macrocosm. It's the one with the giant bugs. It's the macro virus, as they call it, uh, chasing the ship. And it's very similar. I almost think like it's kind of ripping off Genesis, because in Genesis, like Picard and Data return to the ship, after going on the shuttle mission and find it's completely overrun and the crew's totally fucked. Uh, and the same thing happens here. Janeway and Neelix go on that mission in the shuttle and they return and they find Voyager's totally fucked. But instead of them turning into uh, creatures like they did in Genesis, they, they've all been sort of knocked out and uh, taken over by a macrovirus. Uh, <laughs> and, um... 
I don't know. Again, just like Genesis, I never really considered this. When I first saw it, I can just consider it a good episode, and that's it. But, and again, later, wiser years, as I grow older, hear a lot of people trashing this episode, and I watch it again, and I realize, okay, yeah, this episode is ridiculous. They do make a very contrived, overt effort to turn Janeway into uh, a uh, sort of diehard type action hero, which is a bit silly. And, uh,. Just the whole thing, like, again, not scientifically accurate, a lot of plot holes, uh, but I still enjoy it. I still get a lot of enjoyment out of watching this episode. It does get a bit boring towards the middle. But anyway, that's my guilty pleasure. We'll move on, uh, keeping in Voyager, we'll move on to the episode Bliss. Uh, again, when I first saw this, I just considered it a good episode. Act, but then later, actually, I considered it a bad episode. I was like, because I noticed like all the flaws of this episode, all the silliness over the top, hit me. So I was like, nah, this episode sucks. But watching it again, I was like, nah, actually, I still like it, but it's still a bad episode. So it, it worked its way into that guilty pleasure range for me. So Bliss, if you don't remember, that's the episode where a Voyager encounters uh, what they think is a wormhole and they all think they're returning home uh, to the Alpha Quadrant, but it turns out it's just some weird creature that consumes vessels and it's like telepathic, so it makes the everyone think that they're getting exactly what they want uh, while it eats them. <laughs> and then you have this monster hunter that comes on and is like, oh, you're going to eat creature. And Seven of Nine and uh, Naomi Wildman are the only ones not affected by it uh, because they don't want to get home. Which, uh, again, that's a major plot hole because if the creature gives everyone what they want, then they would just find something else for Seven and Naomi to want. Like, the reason they give in this episode of why Naomi and Seven aren't affected is because they don't want to return to Earth. They don't really care about that. But, yeah, if the creature's all about giving people what they want, they would just find something else to give Naomi and Seven, so I don't really buy that. And plus, like, because the monster hunter explained that, um, you know, if his wife or whatever died because their ship they were on were looking, were colonists looking for a world, so they could creature pretending to be this perfect world for them to settle at and they got eaten and you and there's other stories you could say like uh prospectors looking for material they you know they think they find whatever they want so the creature's adaptable and can just telepathically sense what you want it seems like they would make it would telepathically make something because everyone in the ship is acting really drugged and really out of it and it was obvious that something is completely wrong with them uh they're all like oh we're going home and they're being all blissful so i just don't buy that naomi and seven wouldn't be affected that by it just because they don't want to get home but anyway other than that there's more plot holes and stuff so that really hit me in the head but and plus, it's a bit over the top how silly they're all acting. Like, it's just ridiculous. I'm like, oh, look, the admirals are here. I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, you do tone it down a bit. But I still like it. I still think it's a fun episode. Uh, I still uh, get, like, a so bad as good enjoyment out of the Monster Hunter. And uh, I think there's some good character moments between Seven and Naomi. So even though this, I think, is objectively a bad episode, I still like it. Anyway. We only get to my final guilty pleasure, and this, of course, is moving on to Enterprise. Uh, where, I, again, this is another episode I did a review for in the series I was doing of episodes I um, like that everyone else seems to hate. And that is Two Days and Two Nights. And I do think this actually qualifies as a guilty pleasure. Now, this is another episode that apparently people are saying is one of the worst Enterprise episodes. It's like sort of at the bottom of the list. I don't think that it's that bad, especially like this is in season one where there was like crap ton of shitty episodes. <laughs> and so I don't think this is nearly as bad as them. Uh, but I do, you know, it is not, it's not very good. I don't, I will say this episode features like four different plots. I think four or five because all the different characters go on Ryza, you know, for a vacation. They split off and they have their own adventures. And I will say I absolutely hate 
uh, the plot about um, Trip and Reed, like they meet these hot chicks who turn out to be shapeshifters who uh, are just these ugly looking male aliens who rob them and leave them naked or whatever and that, that I just think there's a lot of uh, that storyline's a bit homophobic to me to be to be frank and and it's just me trying to poke fun at humiliating uh, these two men and it's like they've been violated and they're making it as a joke which makes me very uncomfortable uh, <laughs> but so I will admit that is that part of it is not good but the rest of the episode I actually don't think is that bad I as particularly my favorite storyline and this is probably I almost put this in my top 10 funniest list because of this one storyline alone is the um, Dr. Flox storyline. <laughs> this is hilarious because Dr. Flox is like hibernating because apparently Denobians hibernate. And uh, Meriwether gets like injured. He gets on the planet while he's rock climbing or something. And the, the aliens give him the wrong medicine because they're not used to uh, human phys uh, physiology. So he has a very negative reaction to it and he, he's you know getting in peril so and the medic doesn't know how to handle it so they have to wake up dr Flox, who's hibernating and he acts like he's completely stoned he's totally out of it this this scenes with him <laughs> is so hilarious it's like the comedic timing just works so well for that alone i cannot say this is a good episode a bad episode i i have to disagree and think it's a good episode uh because or at least i enjoy it because i think those scenes are so hilarious but again i have to admit the rest of the episode like the the read and uh, Tucker stuff doesn't work. The the stuff with uh, Hoshi finding romance is kind of dull. And the thing with Archer is like a half realized story that doesn't actually go anywhere. Um, but for the Flock stuff alone, I'm saying screw you. It's a good episode, even though I know it's a bad episode. So that's a guilty pleasure of mine. Anyway, that is it for my ten uh, Star Trek guilty pleasures. Uh, special thanks again for Colonel Doomsday for requesting this video uh, and who supports me on Patreon. So if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description below. Uh, if you support me for a dollar or more, you'll get access to my Patreon-only videos. At the moment, I'm doing my top 10 uh, most overrated movies, and I'll do my top 10 most underrated movies. And also, you get access to my schedules to see what videos I'm coming up with. Uh, I'm going to be making next and also uh, once a month I release a video uh, to patrons only in advance uh, so you can see it a bit earlier uh, where I choose one video a month um, and if you want to donate ten dollars or more uh, then you will also be have the per you get all those uh, privileges as well as uh, the reward of being able to request videos like this one uh, so uh, if you'd like to support me like that very helpful very much appreciate it. Really helps this channel uh, going. However, if you're unable to do that and you'd like to support me just by subscribing and leaving a like, that is also very much appreciated and very helpful as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can check out my channel as I do many other Star Trek videos as well as other videos on other shows like Game of Thrones, The Expanse, Lost, a better call Saul and more so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that and thanks a lot for watching